Hey, what's up studs? Ryan here or Aminar Productions with my review of the Lego Star Wars 2013 ATT. It's set number 75019 with 794 pieces. You get five figures in the set being a Battle Droid Commander, Battle Droid Maze Windu, Coleman Trevor, and a Clone Trooper Commander. Decent figure selection. We'll get into that in a little bit. When the set was released in 2013, it costs $90 adjusted for inflation. That's about $100 in 2020 money, which isn't too bad in my opinion. How However, if you want to buy this set new and sealed box today on a place like eBay or Bricklink, you're looking at upwards of $300. Again, that's sealed in the box. So it can get very pricey in today's world, unfortunately. When this was released, it was the third edition of an ATTE LEGO had made in this scale, and it was substantially different than the other two. I did a comparison video back in 2013, and I'm sure I'll do a updated one in the future, but if you want to check that out, I'll link it down below. You're probably wondering, Ryan, you like taking care of your boxes. What happened to this box? It's crushed and everything. Well, I will show you what happened to this box. I don't know why I thought that was a good idea, but apparently I did. Also, oh, quick note. On the box art, you see the three figures, right? Mace, Coleman, Trevor, and uh, your clone commander. But... On the box art, you don't see the two Geonosian battle droids. It's kind of weird. I know they're here, but they're not in the actual art. So that's something you don't see often with a set like this. The back of the box, obviously, you're going to show some different angles of the ATT and some of your play features. So let's take a look at those five figs. Mace Windu is up first, and he's a stellar looking character here. I love the stern face that he's got. Unfortunately, you'll never get a double-sided face on a Mace Windu minifigure. That's just not how it works. I love that they use white legs for him too. My one issue with this particular figure though is that his leg printing is kind of faded for me. Unfortunately, whatever they were doing in the factory that day didn't work out and the color doesn't quite match the rest of the character, which is really a shame to see as on the box art, it shows them in the correct color. So I can only imagine that this was an error and not the way it typically was because again, I only have one of these sets. I couldn't tell you if this is a widespread issue or not, but it was an issue I had on my particular set and something you may want to know about if you're looking into getting this set. Perhaps the best minifigure in this set for a lot of people will be this guy here. It's Coleman Trevor. We briefly see him in episode two, Attack of the Clones, before he is quickly killed, unfortunately. So we don't really get much character development there as far as the movie goes. But they made this awesome head mold for him. Very beautiful, very well uh, detailed in there. Lots of little cuts and edges to it. It's very sharp looking at the front there. Got the green lightsaber, the Jedi robe print, pretty standard, uh, other than maybe the gray underneath for his skin tone there. Gray hands, of course, and around back for the Jedi robe print, kind of typical stuff there. So really nice figure for the head there and one that is exclusive to the set and we have not seen before or since and perhaps never again. Another exclusive figure here, the yellow clone commander uh, based off the episode two clone here. It's pretty much exactly the same except with yellow markings. We've had like a blue one, a red one, and a green one kind of all in the same vein. And this one is a yellow one and he's pretty neat looking. I like that they gave his gun uh, the big technic bit on the end there. I thought that was kind of interesting. Removing that helmet will show us the angry clone face, which is what we typically see on characters like this. And this is a nice addition to the clone army. Opposing the clones and the ATTE is the Geonosis battle droid commander here with the yellow dot to mark that he is the commander on the front of the torso and a little bit of yellow print on the back of the head. Otherwise, he's exactly the same as a standard battle droid, just in a different color, more or less. And the same case here with your regular Geonosis battle droid compared to the commander, just missing the yellow markings. Interesting looking characters uh, for their color, but other than that, they're just standard battle droids. Unfortunately, however, I find the minifigure selection to be a little bit lacking. Five figures in a $90 ATTE set that just doesn't cut it for me, especially when two are battle droids. I just feel like there could have been a couple of regular clones included. If we look back to the original ATTE from 2002, we just get four regular clones. Like I feel like sets like this always should have more clone troopers and only one clone trooper is just a shame to see. It is worth noting though that in 2013, prior to this set's summer release in January of that year, they did release the worst clone battle pack ever. So at least that was on shelves at the same time. And if you wanted more clone troopers, you could pick that up and add to your battle here. I have heard designers talk about making sets with that kind of in mind, so they probably intended for you to pick up some battle packs alongside this and not just this. But it's still a shame to me to see an ATT as nice as this, not include enough clone troopers for it. 
I'll talk very generally about this ATTE to start with. I think it's the best design of the three ATTEs, although that does give up some things like interior space, which we will get to. But externally speaking, this model looks incredibly compact. I think that's the best word for it is compact. It just really sits low to the ground, I feel like, which is nice, like not too low, but low. And then the armor plating and everything on it are incredibly well put together, very tightly packed. Not that the other ATTEs aren't tightly packed like this one, but this is definitely the best job I think they have done with it of the three regular Clone Wars or Episode 2 style ATTEs. Now there are a few printed bits on this set. They're going to be these big rotating armor style plate bits here on the side, which do look very nice. It almost looks like they kind of have arrows on them, which is kind of a cool thing because they move. Uh, we also have some stickers here adding extra detail on the side of the ATTE for like armor plating. And then of course the Republic logo there is a sticker, which I apparently did not center very well on that circular tile piece, but it's still good enough. The plates on the side are made up of surprisingly few pieces, maybe like 20 pieces each, and uh, that's it. Like, they are very, very simple to build, which is kind of nice. It just keeps everything simple for you, especially if you ever want to, like, swap anything out on it. it. Makes it very easy. The ATTE is symmetrical, so you'll find that the other side of the ATTE is also the same stickers and all, although I did apply the Republic logo there a little bit better on this side. Looking to the top of the ATTE's armor, you can see more stickers here for added detail. Another sticker up here under the main cannon on top here. Nice little detail, I guess, but not really important. There are some flick fire missiles on each side of the cannon here, which you can actually replace, which we'll get to in a moment. There's some extras included in the set. There's also a seat for your gunner. So if you want to place any clone trooper minifigure in there, you definitely can do that. But unfortunately, like I said, they don't really include enough clone troopers in this set. So you're really kind of left with empty seats like that in this set. But these can kind of move up and down as you please. Obviously, this spins around as you've been seeing. And then the cannon on the front, you can actually raise up and down a little bit so you can get a better range. With a clone trooper in it, that's what it looks like. There's no control panel or anything for him, so he's kind of more or less just for show, but uh, he looks nice in there, I will say. So that is kind of a nice spot for him. We'll get him out of the way. And almost done with our tour of the armor here. The back area has a couple of bubble turrets, which are kind of nice. You can kind of spin them in any direction you want within their little bubble there. So that's pretty neat. I usually like to try to keep them pretty symmetrical. Otherwise, I think they look a little bit weird, but they do work nicely as a little feature on the back of this thing. They've kind of been on all the ATTEs, so they're nice to see returning. Below all of that, there's actually a ladder underneath the ATTE, so you can actually pull that right on down like so, and you're going to have a little access ladder up into the interior of the ATTE. Accessing that interior is incredibly simple. You just have to lift this back panel here. It kind of lifts up both at once and you can drop it down like that. And it's just kind of out of your way. You'll also be able to open these side panels by lifting them and pulling them away from the body. It'll give you a little bit of extra space to work with in here. Unfortunately, however, if you're like me, you will find that this amount of space is very much inadequate for what you'd be looking for in an ATT. You're not really gonna be carrying troops in here, unfortunately. There's a couple of clips that you could put clone weapons on if you had any clones to put their weapons on for. They had a splash of color here with each trans red tiles, which are nice, I guess. And then you actually get a nice bit of detail there with some stickers. The one on the left there shows a homing spider droid, which was also available at the time. And then on the right there, to me, it looks cracked, although it could be representing something else. But to me, that looks like it's been broken and cracked. There is a little case in here, a little box. And inside that box is going to be a couple of thermal detonators for you to do what you will with. So maybe you could blow up the ATT if that's what you're into, or you could have them blow up the homing spider droid, which I think is their true intended use. But as I was saying, there's just not a lot of interior space here. I mean, you can get a clone or two inside of this, and that's going to be it. Unfortunately, as you can see, when this is closed up, you just don't have too much space there to work with, which is really, really sad to see because usually ATTEs, especially the two former versions of it before this, uh, had much more space to work with. So that was a bit of a shame and a bit of a letdown for this set for me. If you were holding out hope that the front side of the ATT would have more interior space, you will not be uh, very excited about what I'm about to show you. You can lift up this front bit here, much like you can with the back, and it actually does have some extra of those uh, flick fire missiles, like I mentioned, on a nice little rack, I might add. It is kind of a nice little design there, just hidden up underneath. However, there is absolutely Absolutely zero interior space. There's no plate there. They don't even try. So they do not give you any space there to work with for your figures. You can still 
pull these panels out, but that's not really gonna do you any good because you're not gonna have any interior space to work with there. So it's kind of pointless, which is a bit of a shame to see that space more or less go to waste. It really does suck because on the former ATEs, they made use of that space. This one is too small and too compact to make use of that space, which like I said, the compact design is nice for the looks of it. However, for uh, fitting troops in it, not so much. Of course, there's a cockpit at the front of the ship, which opens in a kind of interesting way. If we move that turret out of the way a little bit, you can pull this forward straight towards you, and it's gonna pull right on out of there. And that is where you're gonna have your seat and a couple of antenna pieces so that he can control the ATTE. You can see that interior bit there for the pilot. Not very large, but it does have a nice Technic connector. So you're getting a solid connection to make sure this thing doesn't just fall out unless you really wanna pull it out. You're not gonna have any issues with that. So we'll get him in there and you can see with him in there, it actually looks quite nice. He fits in there solidly, nicely designed. This is supposed to be like an access ladder. I don't really know how clones are supposed to get to that ladder originally, but that's what it said in the visual dictionary. So that's what that piece is supposed to represent. Although I just think it looks like a nice bit of grading on the front, kind of like the grill of a car. You'll also notice there are four bubble turrets on the front here, just solid ATTE standard design type of thing there. And unlike the previous ATTE from 2008, these don't do anything. In the previous version, you could push back and there were some very large spring-loaded shooters in there. They do not exist on this version. These are uh, very much just there for show, not for play. Nearing the end here, the legs can all move, of course. The side legs are a little bit more free moving than these ones, which you have to kind of lift up to get them to move, and they uh, do kind of drop into place. And that's about it. You're not gonna be moving the legs really to move this set. What this set does have though is a handle, and you can just lift this up. It's actually a beautifully designed handle. I really like the way that it looks and feels in the hand, and it works very well. So I think that's a great solid handle. You don't have to worry about anything breaking. You can see the set, uh, if I give it a good shake, don't have to worry, nothing is falling off. So that's actually a really solid aspect of the design for this set, even if we flip it upside down, no problems at all. The two bad things that I have to say about this are the lack of interior space is really disheartening. There's just nowhere to put any troops if you wanna carry them around, which is something I really enjoyed doing with the older ATTEs as a kid. This one just lacks that ability at all. Like you can't really mod it in there because the space doesn't exist, as well as the lack of minifigures. It's a real shame not to get more clone troopers with what is one of the larger Republic vehicles. I feel like sets like this should come with three clone troopers minimum. It's just my personal opinion. But then again, there was a battle pack out at the time. So designers kind of intend for you to pick that one up at the same time and waste your money on one of the worst battle packs they ever released. So a bit of a shame to me that this again, didn't include more clone troopers, does have more interior space. But that's what you give up to have such a sleek design. Like it really is a great looking ATT. And that's what I'm looking for in a set. Like as a, as a display set, this really fits my wants and desires. But as a play set, it really misses the mark to me. So you win some and you lose some there. It depends on what you would want this set for. But to me for display, this is excellent looking and I couldn't be happier. Again, I'm just as a reviewer trying to criticize it for what I think it lacks and that it would be some playability there. But overall, I think this is an amazing set from a great time for Lego Star Wars back in 2013. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10, maybe through the rose tinted glasses of nostalgia there. But this is a great ATTE set that went very well alongside the other sets that were available at the time. And for 90 bucks, I don't think you could beat it. I think that's a very fair price for this ATTE, or at least it was before it was retired and now seven years later is worth like $300 sealed in the box. So if you can find one for like 200 or less, I think you should try to pick it up. Otherwise that's just very expensive for a new set uh, like this. But you know, if it's one of your dream sets, I say go for it, beautiful set. I don't think you'd be disappointed other than maybe with the minifigures just not having enough. Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this set in the comments section below. Leave a like if y'all enjoyed and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you don't wanna miss my future Lego Star Wars videos. Deuces.